I'm back, baby. Ever since the new Fantastic Four film went into production, there have been varying opinions about both being incredibly positive and negative. One side loves the way it looks because it's darker and more serious and isn't jokey like the other films, while others hate it just because and keep saying give it back tomorrow. So I decided to put my two cents in about it. I did however have some questions about the film such as... Why did the 2005 and 2008 films fail? Why is the color palette so dark and the tone so serious? Why is Doom the villain for every single film? Why are they casting so young? Was this film made for the same reason X-Men The First Class and The Amazing Spider-Man was to keep the copyright? Why does director Josh Trank get the benefit of the doubt when the only other film he's ever directed was only, well, one film and it was a found footage film? And also, finally, why didn't the studio immediately address the misconceptions about the films instead of having just the cast do it? Well, let's take them one at a time. One. I don't believe the reason the previous films failed was because of the light tone. The reason they failed was one, miscasting. An example would be Jessica Alba, she's nice to look at, but the way she acted in the film, her character didn't have any agency and it was very flat and she didn't get the emotions across. Part of this was because of the script and the rest had to do with the lack of her acting ability. I actually think that Chris Evans was a decent giant storm who was cocky and a hothead and he pulled it off. Also, Michael Chiklis as Ben Grimm the Thing was great. He gave the character the emotional gravitas it deserved. He was the best character and actor in the entire film. That being said, the special effects weren't any good. The writing was terrible. There wasn't enough exploring done in either of the films, and while the Fantastic Four should have a light tone at times, it just got too silly in parts. I believe the change of color palette and in tone was because the studio wanted to go in a completely opposite direction than the previous films, since they weren't received positively. First, images and footage of the new film seem really dark and serious. I believe this is the Nolan effect because Christopher Nolan made a serious, dark and brooding and intelligent superhero film and it was crazy successful. I believe that Fox thought this was the way to go. The problem with that is this goes against the source material that it no longer looks like what they're trying to adapt anymore. Since the Roger Corman film, Victor Von Doom, a.k.a. Dr. Doom, has been every single film. I can make an argument also that he is the main villain in every film. This is lazy writing. I have a problem with the Shredder being the main villain in almost every Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Interesting that people seem to overlook Magneto being in every X-Men movie, but I suppose that's because of one... Michael Fassbender and Sir Ian McKellen are great actors, and two, they aren't the villains in every single film. But now they're starting to be overused, I think. When filmmakers do this, basically what they're saying is the property doesn't have any good villains, so we'll just use this known one over and over again. And that's wrong. It's the studio and filmmaker's job to do their due diligence and check one, check the backlog, and find an inter interesting villain or to create one. Here's a few Fantastic Four villains that can be used. Well, the ones that Fox has the rights to anyway.
As far as the cast being young, initially I had an issue with it, but I understand the purpose of it. So that the cats can stay young and realistically stay in their prime age longer and do more films. It is interesting though that this is an origin film and the general public has said in the past that they hate origin films. Heck, in 2014, Marvel Studios have said that they're done with doing origin films. So films like Black Panther, Captain Marvel, and Doctor Strange, those won't be origin films. It's going to be really interesting to see if people will complain about this being an origin film, however. As far as the actors themselves, I believe that Fox wasn't looking for high-profile named actors, but up-and-comers. The one actor that I've seen the most of is Michael B. Jordan, and from what I've seen from him, he's given some great performances, so hopefully he'll be able to give more depth to the character of Johnny Storm. I just hope they don't lose Johnny Storm's sense of humor though. Since the last Fantastic Four film, 20th Century Fox has been trying to reboot the franchise. This became more urgent when Marvel created Marvel Studios and released Iron Man. Once that became a hit, they realized that if they didn't do anything with the property, they would lose the copyright. Because despite the public not liking the previous two Fantastic Four films, they did make money. Fortunately for them, unlike X-Men and Spider-Man, which had a five-year window in order to keep the copyright. Fantastic Four had a seven-year window. And just like those last two properties that I just spoke of, they were just able to film something under the deadline, and now they still have the copyright. So yes, as with First Class and The Amazing Spider-Man, this film was made for a major part to keep the copyright. But with those two films that I just noted, they had one, a good director, and two, at least a couple really good actors who could give really great performances so the public could overlook things like the rushed special effects and so on. And you know, maybe that will be the case here too as well, but I never feel easy when one of the main reasons a film was made was to keep the copyright. And I'm looking at you, Roger Corman. Look, I understand that people really love Chronicle, but it's only one film. I thought it was a fine film, but I didn't understand why it had to be found footage. But does anybody remember Captain America the Warren Soldier? Before it came out, people were really down on the Russo brothers because they only had done one film. And there was a lot of public self-doubt. But with Josh Trank, they seemed to give him the benefit of the doubt. This will be only his second film and his first conventional one. So we probably should take a wait and see approach when, before we're thinking that this is either going to be a really good film or be a really bad film. Once the film was announced and was in production, a lot of information was being circulated. Some of it was false, some we don't know if it will be true until we see the film, and some we may never know is true or false. Some examples include Josh Trent being fired and then rehired, script problems, how Dr. Doom plays into the plot and his backstory. Is he an internet troll or is he a gypsy who grew up with the, within the Richards family? Fox was slow in answering these and other questions. Maybe they felt that bad publicity was still good publicity. It looks like, however, they realized that they were was too much bad press and they finally had to say something about it. Or rather, have the cast say something about it. There seemed to be a period of months where each actor kept talking to the press or on social media to clarify misconceptions about the film. And while I appreciate that, it's really not their place to do it. It's the studios. With all that being said, I am interested in seeing the film. Despite my misgivings, I do hope it's a good film, and I hope that the studio, the writer, director, and the cast treat this property with the respect that it deserves. And until next time, goodbye.